This week, Jason Collins stunned the world when he announced that he's gay. In doing so, he became the first professional athlete of a major sport in the United States to make such an announcement. This, of course, created all kinds of media buzz. On ESPN, Chris Broussard was asked to comment on this from a Christian perspective. Collins, after all, claims that he's a Christian. Broussard said, I don't think it's fair to call him a Christian because anybody who's living a sinful lifestyle in open rebellion against the Bible, and he said this isn't just somebody who's homosexual, this would apply to adulterers, to people living together for, uh, before marriage, that sort of thing. He said anybody doing that is not a Christian. They're not living out the commands of the Bible. So how do you call yourself a Christian? Now, I think Broussard is on to something here. I don't know that I'd agree with his wording per se, but I think there's an underlying theme that is certainly important for us to understand, and that's this. Being a Christian is more than ascribing to a philosophical system or expressing a belief in Christ. Jesus himself in the seventh chapter of Matthew's Gospel says, not everybody who says to me, Lord, Lord, will be saved. You see, what this means is that there's something more than just offering lip service to being a Christian. Being a Christian actually involves following a way of life. The earliest Christians were known as followers of the way. They had a particular way of life that they lived. This way of life was defined by following the commands of God and the commands of Christ. Jesus himself says, you are my friends if you do what I command you to do. Now, so often we can hear this and we hear about commands and we think of them as being restrictive. And we can almost hear Jesus sounding like somebody who's trying to manipulate people, saying, you know, do what I say and then you're my friend, otherwise I don't want anything to do with you. If this had been said by a normal human being, certainly it would be a manipulative play. But when it comes from God, we have to remember that God is all-knowing and he's all-good. Because he's all-knowing, he knows what is good for us. And because he's all-good, he wills what is good for us. And because he knows and wills what is good for us, he gives us commands. And these commands aren't meant to restrict us or to prevent us from living freely. Rather, they're meant to help us to live in harmony with God. Because, see, the ultimate good for us as human beings is to live in harmony with God, to share that life with God. So when God gives us his commands, he does so not to restrict us, but to call us to harmony with him, to call us to union with himself. And so that's what it means to be a Christian, is to understand that these commands God gives us aren't arbitrary. They're not meant for just one group of people and one set of circumstances. They're meant for all times. And this is the way to be in harmony and union with God. And so as followers of this way of life that Christ has given to us, we seek to follow the commands that Christ has given to us. Now, certainly we're all sinners and we all fail to some extent. But the important thing is that for a Christian, they understand their sinfulness and they try to convert themselves. They try to repent from their sinfulness. When somebody doesn't do that, when somebody instead says, I don't want to change from my sinfulness. Instead, I want my sinfulness to be endorsed. They've ceased to become a Christian at that point because they're asserting their will over God's will. But when we submit ourselves to God's will, when we say, I want to try to live in harmony with God, and I understand that God has these commandments, and even though they bother me, they restrict me in some way or another, I know that they're for my own good. They're going to help me to live in harmony with God and ultimately bring me to my greatest good. Well, then all of a sudden, if I do that, I can live this Christian way of life because I'm understanding that I need to be the one who's called to conversion and not God. So Christianity is, in fact, a way of life, and it needs to be lived out. It's not just a sim system of belief, but it's something that needs to be implemented into our everyday lives by the way we conduct ourselves. And certainly that involves following Christ's commands and trying to conform our lives to his commands more deeply every day of our life.